A Gaussian surface sometimes abbreviated as GS is a closed surface in three-dimensional space through which the flux of a vector field is calculated, usually the gravitational field, the electric field, or magnetic field. It is an arbitrary closed surface S equals V the boundary of a three-dimensional region 5 used in conjunction with Gauss's law for the corresponding field Gauss's law, Gauss's law for magnetism, or Gauss's law for gravity by performing a surface integral, in order to calculate the total amount of the source quantity enclosed, e.g., amount of gravitational mass as the source of the gravitational field or amount of electric charge as the source of the electrostatic field, or vice versa, calculate the fields for the source distribution. For concreteness, the electric field is considered in this article, as this is the most frequent type of field the surface concept is used for. Gaussian surfaces are usually carefully chosen to exploit symmetries of a situation to simplify the calculation of the surface integral. If the Gaussian surface is chosen such that for every point on the surface the component of the electric field along the normal vector is constant, then the calculation will not require difficult integration as the constants which arise can be taken out of the integral. Common Gaussian surfaces Most calculations using Gaussian surfaces begin by implementing Gauss's law for electricity Phi E equals Display style Phi underscore E equals V Display style script style partial V E D A equals Q V Epsilon zero Display style Math BF E C D O T Mathem D Math BF equals FRAC Q V var epsilon underscore zero Thereby Q V is the electrical charge contained in the interior V of the closed surface. This is Gauss's law, combining both the divergence theorem and Coulomb's law. Topic spherical surface A spherical Gaussian surface is used when finding the electric field or the flux produced by any of the following, a point charge a uniformly distributed spherical shell of charge any other charge distribution with spherical symmetry the spherical Gaussian surface is chosen so that it is concentric with the charge distribution. As an example, consider a charged spherical shell S of negligible thickness, with a uniformly distributed charge Q and radius R. We can use Gauss's law to find the magnitude of the resultant electric field E at a distance R from the center of the charged shell. It is immediately apparent that for a spherical Gaussian surface of radius R with the same example, using a larger Gaussian surface outside the shell where R greater than R, Gauss's law will produce a non-zero electric field. This is determined as follows. The flux out of the spherical surface S is phi e equals display style phi underscore e equals S display style script style partial S e d a equals C e d a cos zero equals e s d a display style math bf e c d o t d math bf a equals int int underscore c e da cos zero caret circ equals e int int underscore s da the surface area of the sphere of radius r is s d a equals four pi R two display style int int underscore s da equals four pi r caret two, which implies phi e equals e four pi r two display st let phi underscore e equals e four pi r caret two. By Gauss's law, the flux is also Phi E equals Q A Epsilon zero Display style Phi underscore E equals FRAC Q underscore of var epsilon underscore zero 
Finally equating the expression for phi e gives the magnitude of the E field at position R E 4 pi R 2 equals Q A epsilon 0 E equals Q A 4 pi epsilon 0 R two display style e four pi r caret two equals frac q underscore of var epsilon underscore zero quad right arrow quad e equals frac q underscore of four pi var epsilon underscore zero r caret two. This non-trivial result shows that any spherical distribution of charge acts as a point charge when observed from the outside of the charge distribution. This is in fact a verification of Coulomb's law. And, as mentioned, any exterior charges do not count. Topic: <inaudible> Cylindrical surface. A cylindrical Gaussian surface is used when finding the electric field or the flux produced by any of the following: an infinitely long line of uniform charge, an infinite plane of uniform charge, an infinitely long cylinder of uniform charges. Example. Field near infinite line charge is given below. Consider a point P at a distance r from an infinite line charge having charge density charge per unit length lambda. Imagine a closed surface in the form of cylinder whose axis of rotation is the line charge. If h is the length of the cylinder, then the charge enclosed in the cylinder is q equals lambda h. Display style q equals lambda h, where q is the charge enclosed in the Gaussian surface. There are three surfaces A, B, and C as shown in the figure. The differential vector area is Da on each surface A, B, and C. The flux passing consists of the three contributions. Phi e equals display style phi underscore e equals Display style script style a e d a equals a e d a plus b e d a plus c e d a Display style math bf e c d o t d math bf a equals int int underscore a math bf e c d o t d math bf a plus int int underscore b math bf e c d o t d math bf a plus int int underscore c math bf e c d o t d math bf a. For surfaces a and b, e and da will be perpendicular. For surface C, E and Da will be parallel, as shown in the figure. Phi E equals A E D A cos 90 plus B E D A cos 90 plus C E D A cos 0 equals E C D A. Display style begin aligned phi underscore E and equals int int underscore a eta cos 90 caret circ plus int int underscore B eta cos 90 caret circ plus int int underscore C eta cos 0 caret circ and equals E int int underscore c dot end aligned the surface area of the cylinder is c d a equals 2 pi r h display style int int underscore c dot equals 2 pi r h which implies phi e equals e 2 Pi R H display style phi underscore e equals e two pi R H by Gauss's law phi e equals q epsilon zero display style phi underscore e equals frac q var epsilon underscore zero equating for phi e yields e two Pi R H equals Lambda H 
epsilon 0 e equals lambda 2 pi epsilon 0 r Display style e two pi r h equals frac lambda h var epsilon underscore zero quad right arrow quad e equals frac lambda two pi var epsilon underscore zero r. Topic Gaussian pillbox. This surface is most often used to determine the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge with uniform charge density, or a slab of charge with some finite thickness. The pillbox has a cylindrical shape, and can be thought of as consisting of three components, the disc at one end of the cylinder with area pi r squared, the disc at the other end with equal area, and the side of the cylinder. The sum of the electric flux through each component of the surface is proportional to the enclosed charge of the pillbox, as dictated by Gauss's law. Because the field close to the sheet can be approximated as constant, the pillbox is oriented in a way so that the field lines penetrate the discs at the ends of the field at a perpendicular angle and the side of the cylinder are parallel to the field lines. See also Area Surface area Vector calculus Integration Divergence theorem Faraday cage Field theory Field line